Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quentin here and welcome to this video on running commands via the command line. So if you guys are on Mac, we are going to be using a Mac for this or I am going to be using a Mac for this tutorial. But if you guys are on Windows, then don't worry, I've got you guys sorted as well. So check the video description below and there is going to be a link to some of the commands that we're going to be running for Windows. I'm going to open up Finder and I'm going to go to my root directory or my home directory, which is um, the little icon with the home and probably your username. So whatever you, whatever user you're logged into on your computer, um, that should probably appear here in Finder. And that is your home directory. Now the reason why I'm stressing this so much is because when you open up Terminal, it's also going to take you to your home directory. So uh, Quinton's MacBook Pro and the user Quinton, uh, that is my home directory uh, that is open in Terminal right now. And that is this thing here. So to prove it to you, I'm gonna run a command ls. Uh, and if you take a look at our cheat sheet, if we just scroll down to core commands ls, this is a short listing. So this is gonna be a listing of all of the uh, files uh, within my, or all of the files and folders within my directory. So. Uh, if I hit ls, uh, and or if I type ls and hit enter, you can see that I've got applications, downloads, Dropbox, movies, uh, and yeah, we've got applications, Dropbox, downloads, movies, all of those uh, folders are here as well. I think the one difference that some of you sharp-eyed people might notice is that desktop is here and not actually here, and I think um, Apple just kind of removes that uh, that folder for me, or it just, that's actually a hidden folder that, um, you know, I can unhide using a command uh, that I'll show you guys maybe in a future video. But uh, yeah, uh, this is essentially what, what the command line version looks like, and this is the GUI version. Uh, but what I'd like to do now is um, show you guys a few more commands. So yeah, ls will list everything in the directory. We can also use another command called cd, and what cd does is change the directory. So that'll change us to a certain directory. Now, if we run cd as it is with nothing next to it, uh, that should pretty much take us back to the home directory. Another way to go to the home directory is type cd and then add in this little tilde sign. Uh, so if you run that, it also will take you back to the home directory. So that's a really, really important factor to notice or to note, take note of because you might change directories on your computer um, quite a lot and then not know how to get back to the home directory. Uh, and the fastest way is to just type CD with a little tilde or just CD as it is, All right? Um, so now let's CD into a directory. And I think uh, the best thing for me to do is CD onto my desktop. So let's type CD uh, desktop. And now, believe it or not, I can, uh, I can close this window because uh, now I'm on my desktop. So my desktop is kind of behind the terminal here. And uh, yeah, whatever I start doing in my terminal, stuff should start appearing on the desktop for me. So, uh, if I type in another command here, which is mkdir, uh, and let's just switch back to my notes. So I'm, I'm looking under core commands and I'm also looking under file management because that's what we can use, uh, or directory management as well, because uh, that's what we can use uh, the terminal for now. And these are some really helpful and really useful uh, commands. So I'm gonna, make a directory and that's gonna create a new directory for us, right? So MK, MKDIR stands for make directory and let's create a new file or folder over here called uh, hamburger, right? And you can see that I've run that command and now I have a folder on my desktop called hamburger, right? Uh, something I can do here is CD into that directory so I can go into, uh, hamburger. And now you can see that we've got hamburger in the uh, command line here. So that means that I am in my hamburger directory. Uh, and from here, I can uh, create a file. So uh, the the command to create a file on Mac is touch and then whatever your file's name is. So let's uh, touch and then let's create a file here called patty.html. Right, and I can do this a couple times. So I can say touch, uh, t 
tomato.php or something and uh, touch uh, lettuce.css and that's gonna create all of these files, right? So uh, if I open up this directory now, here we have lettuce.css, patty.html and tomato.php. So we've got all the files set up here in the directory. Uh, and yeah, we did all of that using the command line. And now we can actually start removing some of these files as well. So uh, if we look at the uh, option to remove files, uh, we've got, uh, well, there, there are a few different op options that we can opt for here. So there is rm uh, and then rm-i or rm-r. Uh, so there's a bunch of different ones that we can use here. Uh, but let's just go with the standard rm and let's remove patty.html and hit enter and that just removed patty from my uh, directory here. So patty is now gone. Um, if you guys want, you can try some of the other commands. So rm-i uh, basically allows you to remove a file, but you have to confirm whether you would like that file removed or not. So let's rm-i uh, lettuce.css and hit enter. And you can see here, it's asking, are you sure you'd like to remove lettuce.css? And you can type the word yes or no. Uh, and if you type yes, bam, that file is now gone. Um, uh, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you can play around with uh, with this. Uh, something else I wanna show you guys is how to CD back a folder. So if you type CD and then two dots, that's gonna take you back just one directory. So remember uh, CD, and a tilde will take you all the way back to the home directory, uh, but cd and then two dots is just gonna take you back one folder. Uh, so I've gone out of my hamburger directory and I'm now on my desktop. Um, and so if I hit ls, I should have my hamburger folder showing up. So that's, that's that folder back there. Uh, and yeah, I can then type rm-r uh, and if I look in my cheat sheet here, rm-r will remove a directory and all of its contents. So right now the hamburger directory exists and it actually has a file in it called tomato.php. So we can actually remove everything by just typing rm-r uh, hamburger, right? And hamburger should now be gone and you can see everything's kind of disappeared here as well. Um, now I kind of do want to, uh, I, I probably should have done this before before running rm-r, but let's, um, let's open up the terminal here again and say mkdir uh, test, right? So if I create a test directory on my desktop and then I type um, in my terminal, I type rm-test. So if I just try remove test and hit enter, um, you can see that Oops, <laughs> that's because I've put this little weird, um, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have typed that thing. So let's just go rm test. So the name of my uh, folder and hit enter. You can see that it says uh, test is a directory. So test is actually a folder, not a file. And you can't use rm on a, f uh, on a folder. You can only use it on a file. So that's why you have to say rm r uh, test and that will get rid of the, the folder that you're trying to delete. So whatever folder name you put here, that's gonna remove that folder. Um, something else you can also do, like after you've run a lot of commands in your command line, um, the command line can get a little bit messy like it is now. So sometimes it's just easier to type clear. That's gonna kind of remove everything from the terminal, although not really, cause I can still scroll up. Uh, so all it does is just push everything out of view. Um, and yeah, uh, let's let's actually let's actually go back to my home directory. So a neat little trick here. Something I've just done is I've pushed up on the arrow key or the up arrow key on my keyboard, uh, and that goes back to some of my last uh, um, commands that I've run. So yeah, if you guys want to you know keep a history of commands that you've run, you can always just hit up and down, and you can rerun a command. Um, so if if maybe you uh, wrote a command that had an error like rm-test, you can then just go back there and uh, modify it, which is nice when commands start getting really long. Um, but yeah, uh, now that we've created directories, removed directories and all of that fun stuff, 
Uh, let's move on to something a little bit more complicated. Uh, so what I'd like to do is create a new file on my desktop. So I'm already on my desktop right now. You can see that over there. Uh, and let's type uh, touch test dot uh, PHP, right? Uh, and now I've got my PHP file on my computer here. And if I type open test dot PHP, that's probably gonna open the file in uh, my favorite text editor. So uh, there we go. I've got sublime text open here. I've got test dot PHP in here. Uh, and I can type something in like, this is just a test, uh, hit save and close this now. Right, and I know that this fi file has some text in it, um, but something else I can also do is open this uh, file. We don't actually do this very often, uh, but something you can do is open this file in the command line. So let's type in um, some of the commands here. So you can, you can choose between nano or pico, and I think there's a few others, uh, but let's type uh, nano test.php. Uh, and that's gonna open up the PHP file in my uh, command line. And you can see we've got the test or the text here. This is just a test. So let's remove all of this, uh, this text. Um, and let's change it to uh, something else, right? Uh, and yeah, this next part can be a little bit tricky because yeah, if you want to actually close the file, uh, you have to hold down Control and X on a Mac, and that's going to ask you if you want to save your changes, and you can um, put in Y for yes, and that's going to save the file, uh, right? And I think uh, the next part here is, uh, I mean, I can hit Control and cancel, or yeah, if I just hit enter, it's gonna save the file, okay. Uh, so, yeah, we don't often use or open up files in, in the uh, command prompt, but um, yeah, it's just nice to know that you can actually do that. Uh, so now if I take this exact same file and I open this in Sublime, uh, you can see that the say, or the change that I made in the uh, terminal or yeah, in my command line has actually been saved to the uh, file as well, right? So that's pretty awesome. And yeah, I think I've covered uh, most of the basics of using the command line. So I hope you guys now, now know how to uh, navigate around your computer. Um, I think maybe something I can do just before I end off this video is to go over to my command line here, CD back to my home directory. And if I hit LS, I'm back uh, in the place where I started with my applications, my downloads, etc. So yeah, just to show you guys how that works. And uh, yeah, I hope I've pretty much covered all of the basics. If you guys are looking to kind of recap over some of these things, check the video descriptions uh, links uh, because I'm gonna link to this website and I'm also gonna link to this website. And you guys can play around with these commands by yourself. Uh, hopefully you don't break break anything. And before I end off this video, I want to talk to you guys about Dev Mountain. So Dev Mountain is a coding bootcamp that'll teach you everything you need to know to become a iOS developer, a UX designer, or a web developer. So if you are if you're in that position right now where you want to make that career change and you want to go from whatever you're doing right now, whether it be working at McDonald's, uh, working uh, at a, a regular office job, or you know you've just finished school and you have absolutely no idea what you want to do with their life with your life. Um, go ahead and check out their website. Uh, you can watch some of their videos or just scroll down the page and read a little bit more about their uh, what makes Dev Mountain unique. So they're career focused and uh, they'll give you free housing. That's a pretty cool plus. Uh, so whatever you've paid to be or to be attending their course, uh, you'll also have housing involved. Uh, so you won't have to worry about where you're staying because uh, yeah, um, depending on where you are, you might have to just move cities for the time that you're at the boot camp. So they have, uh, they have locations in Provo, Salt Lake City, Dallas, and Phoenix, so you can go ahead and check all of those locations out, figure out which one's best for you. Uh, and they've got courses that run for about 13 weeks. So yeah, just check out their programs and uh, figure out 
if it's worth it for you or not. The link is in the video description below and uh, I'm gonna end this video off here. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Please feel free to leave a like, comment and share this video because all of that stuff is gonna help my channel grow and I'll see you guys in the next one.